uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger writing an op-ed. It's time for Republicans who are so bent on enforcing conformity to ask themselves a question. What would Ronald Reagan have done? What would Ronald Reagan have done? Dustin Stockton with the Tea Party dot, the Tea Party dot net is on the line with us. Uh, Dustin is the uh, is the chief strategist for the Tea Party dot net. Hey, Dustin, welcome to the program. Hey, Tom, thanks for having me on. I've uh, I've actually been listening for a long time back from my uh, days in Eugene, Oregon. So oh, great! It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be on today. Thank you. I'm curious your thoughts on this op-ed by Arnold Schwarzenegger, in which he's basically saying that the party is doing these purges. We're going to see it today in all probability or tomorrow uh, with uh, Richard Luger uh, being kicked out in Indiana by a, by a Tea Partier. And, uh, and, and, you know, the party basically lurching so hard to the, and it's not even the right anymore, it's, it's, it's so embracing the agenda of transnational corporations and billionaires that average, average Republicans feel like there's no place left for them anymore. Well, see, I think this is where we have a fundamental disagreement about what's happening. So I've been involved in the Tea Party movement um, basically from the very beginning. Um, I don't necessarily see the Tea Party movement as the lurch to the right that you see it as on uh, across the board issues. In fact, having listened to you for so long, I think we have more agreements than you would anticipate on the role of these corporations and transnationals inside the power of government. I think the Tea Party is looking inside the Republican Party at people like Dick Luger, who has done the bidding of those corporations, um, and we're removing them with people who are more intelligent and will be able to, who, who haven't been in Washington so long, that they won't see that corruption for what it is. The Tea Party movement, at but least for D- the, but the Dustin, Tea Party movement. Dustin, when you look at the Tea Party Republicans, the freshman class of Tea Party Republicans, there's, what, 80, 90 of them, something like that, in the House of Representatives. They've yeah, taken more freshmen. money. They've taken more money from corporations, and particularly from big banks, than the Republicans did before them. Right. Well, a, a lot of that's skewed by people who are no longer uh, very friendly with the Tea Party. People, I know Scott Brown in Massachusetts. Has no, I'm talking about the House of Representatives. He's in the Senate. Sure. But, but the, the, the point is that we came in and... and, and the message that we had was co-opted by people who didn't have the best agendas. Now, there are a lot of really good Tea Party freshman congressmen. Name one. Um, who, Alan West. Alan Raul West. Labrador in Idaho. I think Raul Labrador is an outstanding congressman. Okay, um, and, and have you checked to see where he's getting his money from? Uh, I haven't. I haven't seen his FEC report. No. Okay, I, you know, I would strongly suggest that you take a look at that. I think you would be shocked. Um, sure. Uh, you know, the, 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 that, that's the tragedy of Washington, D.C., is, is to a large extent, particularly if you're a Republican, if you want to get reelected, you've got to be, toe the corporate line. But this is why I said that you guys are doing the works of billionaires and, and transnational corporations, even, even if your rhetoric or even your beliefs are that we shouldn't have an oligarchy in the United States. When you guys sure. say things like, let's get government out of the way with things like, for example, regulations. Okay. Um, you know, let's let's uh, let's do away with the EPA. Sure. What you're saying then is we're going to turn our air and water over to transnational corporations. When you say things like let's get government, you know, out of the way of or let's let's have lower taxes. What you're saying, you know, the average working person is not going to see anything lower taxes. What, what you're saying sure. is let's yeah. make sure that Mitt Romney can continue paying 15 percent. And right, let me take. The, let, can I take these one at a time? Sure. So I don't forget Go for where it. we're at. Yeah. Um, let, let, let's start with taxes. So, so taxes, right? We don't necessarily. We're not necessarily advocating for lower taxes. What we're advocating for is a simplified tax code because we believe that having a eighty thousand plus page tax code is the language of corruption that that manipulates the free market. So but that simplified tax is, code. My, 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 it ends up being like a flat tax, which means, I mean, Mitt Romney's plan, the, the, the proposal that Mitt Romney has put forward would cause people who make less than $65,000 a year to pay a lot more in taxes, and people who make over $200,000 a year pay a lot less in taxes. How is that okay. to the benefit of any working person, Tea Party or, or not? Well, well the, the benefit would be from revenue, because the, the people who are paying, right, you want to raise the top marginal tax rate. That's correct. Um, 
Uh, My problem with raising the top marginal tax rate under the current system is that guys who work 20 hours a day or, you know, 80 hours a week and make $150,000 their taxes are going to go up. The, no, they're the not. Millionaires and, they're not. The they're not. Oh, you know, no. Uh, the no, the buffer no, rule that Obama is proposing is raising taxes after you've earned a million dollars a year on your million and first dollar. And before okay. that, what he was proposing was on people who make over a quarter. And for Social Security, he's he's proposing for over two hundred and fifty thousand a year. Yeah. And frankly, I think if you're earning two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, or you're earning a million dollars a year, and we're talking about having you pay an additional. Four percent in Social Security, right. or a, di- and a, di- a, a, a maximum of thirty percent. Uh, you know, I don't think you're going to be hurt by that, frankly. Sure, but the problem is that the the people who you want to target are going to have somebody like Dick Luger insert a loophole for them into the tax code. And so, when you have an eighty thousand page tax code, raising the marginal tax rate right now isn't going to be effective on anybody but the, the working class. And that, so, that number of... So wait a minute, your, your logic been, here is... Around a lot. Your logic here is let's not raise taxes on rich people because they'll figure, out, they'll figure a way around it. That, no, aren't my, you surrendering before is, you even fight the war? No, my, the war, right, you're fighting the wrong battle, in my opinion. So well, why should Mitt Romney pay 14.9% on $22 million worth of income when in, in the state of Wisconsin a firefighter and a teacher together are paying more than 20% in federal income taxes? Well, that, I think that's a fair question. Part of it is the investment income uh, incurs risk. Why, sh- why should we and- have that? Why, 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 should people, why, sh- why should people who make their money using money pay a maximum tax okay. rate of 15%, whereas people who make their money teaching people or saving lives or using the sweat of their arm or the sweat of their minds, you know, the power of their minds, why should those people pay 35%? Well, the, the reason that 15% is a different number is, is not all investments work, and you're incurring a lot of risk, and we want to encourage investment into private industry. You, the way you encourage investment is you allow people to carry forward losses. If investments don't work, that's a loss. You can offset that against against your taxes. You know, it was Ronald Reagan who said that the that the the uh, uh, dividend rate and, and interest rate should be the same as the earned income rate, and he actually equalized them for one year. They were both twenty eight percent. I think it was eighty six. Okay. Might have been eighty seven. And and he came out and said, you know, is should a tax, you know, he said it's stupid. That was his word, or crazy. Right. Uh, that that, well, a, that a bus driver should pay GE more taxes than a millionaire. Right. I'm all for GE paying their fair share of taxes. I'm, no, I'm, I'm talking about Mitt Romney, not GE. Thing. Sure, sure. But the, the, the point is that the, the, under the current tax code, I see Tea Party people every day fighting to make the tax code more simple, more fair, and more understandable. But see, those and are I, those I see, are the buzzwords that are used by the billionaires who want a flat tax, who want to do what Romney is doing and quote simplify the taxes so that people who make less than sixty thousand dollars pay more in income taxes, and people like him pay less in income taxes. Well, well, see, we're having an intelligent discussion on this, right? Which is the the, the problem is is the media sound bites it into simple things. So when, when you were talking about regulation earlier, this is another point, which yeah. is no, no, tea, no reasonable Tea Partiers really want to just end regulations. For example, I want Glass-Steagall back. I want to break up the big national mega bank. Wow, I'm impressed. Um, Dustin, I'm going to have to leave you with the last word uh, on that point. And Dustin Stockton, <laughs> thetearty.net. Thanks, Dustin.